So, welcome back to Suikoden. We only had half an hour of technical difficulties, but it's okay because we are now streaming on my new computer. We are on Tough Stuff. We have officially made the transition over to the new computer. Yeah, this is the first game that I've streamed um, on the new computer. We did a creative sprint stream last night for anyone who joined. Um, we are going to be trying to do creative sprint streams Monday nights every week because I'm writing again. And what better way to celebrate me writing than making the rest of you have to work on stuff too. <clears throat> so it's very exciting news for me to have this new computer because I have all this other stuff open and it works um yeah no the sprints were fun i did some actual work work but then i worked a little bit on fanfic after i did some work work because i was like i'm gonna reward myself for doing what i'm supposed to do by doing what i want to do um this is a neat segue into gosh this is totally not the right can i inflict fanfic on all of you Are you okay with with that? Because I have Okay, well Blue Glass and Chrono say so, but they've already read the, the snippet in, in question. So like Oh my god, Google thinks I'm talking to her. I'm not talking to you, Cro No! <laughs> Blue Glass and Chrono Caesar, but they've already read the snippet in any question, so like Thanks, Google. <laughs> no, let's see. Let's pick. Let's pick a song that's the right song for this. Um, this is probably a good one. Maybe, maybe this one. No, we're gonna go with this one because it's kind of got a bit of an ominous thing. Okay, so. To kind of catch up where we were and what's going on and yes we're like listening to ninja type music whatever it's fine this is what we're listening to um so last time so every stream for the past three streams has had what should be a major character death in it which when you think about it because i talk a lot so i pad out the streams i think a lot more yes we'll get there but i just okay well unless there's another Unless there's another song that is a better fit for this. Um, but I want something that's a little bit ominous but in the background. And I, this, this works. Um, uh, but yeah, so... Timeline-wise, like, I've been getting through these scenes slower than I think a person might. Unless they were running around leveling up a lot. And maybe meeting people. So having three major character deaths in a row within just a few hours is, is it's pretty brave. Um, especially because we're not at the very end of the game. I mean, if this was like, you know, building up to the climax and the end, end, end of the game, um, cause we're certainly not like at the beginning of the game anymore, but we're not like right at the end. And you would expect like, once you've had this many characters die in a row, because first play through, Pawn would die. So I'm treating the duel between Pawn and Tio as a character death. Because as your first playthrough, that's going to be your experience. Is Gremio's going to die, Pawn's going to die, Tio's going to die. Because um, Ted kind of dies early on to like kind of show that things are serious. I mean, more than just that. It's not quite that like simplistic, but in a way, like he's pretty early on. Um, but you have these three very major characters because, again, as we talked about last time, Tio is a massive presence in the story, even though he himself doesn't show up very often. Um, so you have these three major characters dying all in a row in really dramatic ways. Like, Pawn's death is the least, in, in, in some ways, it's, it's, it's the least gripping of them, which is not to say that it's not gripping. But like, he's a full grown adult man making his decisions, he knows what he's doing, etc, etc. Um, so it feels more fair. You know, he knows what he's doing, he knows what he's getting into, he volunteers to do it. Um, he's kind of lived a full life, 
he finds the experience satisfying it's a satisfying scene it's good so you're like okay that is a shame and i'm upset that it happened but you're not like shaking your fist at the unfairness of fate quite in the same way um whereas like with gremio it feels like that shouldn't be necessary and also gremio is so sweet and and and, and is your mother figure you take it more personally you are almost invariably going to be more attached to Gremio than you are to Pawn. Um, so, and then, so, so that is, that is tragic. And that's the one that you see your character, like he basically lays in bed all day being depressed afterwards, which is understandable. And that one hits really hard. That is the, that is the, the death in those three that people usually cry at the most. Um, I would cry at Pawn if Pawn died, but I'm glad that he didn't. We saved him. Um, but the thing with Tio is that it, it, it shouldn't be like that, you know? Like, it's not fair. He shouldn't make his, um, like, his son shouldn't have to, like, the son shouldn't have to kill the father. Um, like, that's, that's, it's, it's wrong and you're, like, yelling at Tio, but you also understand why he's doing what he's doing. Um, so Tio and Gremio dying are the ones that have, like, a bigger, they make a bigger impression. Oh, but still, that's a lot to have happen, like, all back to back to back to back. And for a game to then be like, also now the story's going to continue for a while? Like, how are you going to raise the stakes after that? Suikoden's not afraid to have things that are enormous happen partway through the story. Um, because they have a lot of things coming up. Um... Uh, so, so like, they, they, I don't know. They're not afraid to have consequences. So, if you'll recall, last stream, when we, um, when we were, uh, after we finished with Tio, and we were kind of talking about the scene with Tio's death, and how, like, emotionally engaging that was, um, and, uh, Chrono challenged me to write that scene. I think he did that. Did he do that on stream? Did you folks hear that? <laughs> Was that a... Okay, so that was on stream. Okay, well, so Chrono did challenge me to do that. Um, and so I have been, as you've heard, since some of you have been here for multiple streams, despite me taking long breaks in between them and having these long, like, 10 minute long rambles about things before we actually dive in to play the game. But I guess this is what you're here for. You're not here to see what happens next, unless you're Chrono. Chrono wants to see what happens next. And a couple of you are blind here, but, uh... Or I should say, are watching this game blind. Um, but most of you are here, I think, to hear me ramble. So, I have rambled. <laughs> but, uh, but as I've mentioned a few times, as I've been getting back into writing, fanfic has been a big part of what's getting me back into writing. And so for the month of November, I was supposed to do a Drabble challenge day, but because I'm Lauren and I talk a lot, my Drabbles are sometimes like 1400 words, you know, give or take a little bit. Um, oh no, Chrono. Uh, uh, but, uh, but so I was supposed to have, like, I had a prompter every day. Of course, I moved in the middle of the month and a lot of things were happening that were very stressful and difficult. So I'm still very slowly trying to catch up and it is now December. <laughs> um, but um, I picked, I picked one of my prompts and I wrote out the scene where, um, where, uh, Tyr and Tio fight. Um, and I was actually pretty happy with how it turned out and it's not super short. Yeah, I know, Blue Glass. I really should have named them Ficklets, which is more accurate. Ficklets, I think, tend to be like what I would think of as like a short, short story. So like, what, a thousand words to, to 2,000 max? A thousand to 1,500, something like that. It's a good sweet spot for my short stuff. I have written things that are 500 words or less. <laughs> it's not often, but sometimes. Um, but, oh good, so this is Flutie Bot with all of her quotes. I have been afraid whether Flutie Bot made the transition. Oh, by the way, if you haven't been here um, to see Tough Stuff and Flutie Bot. I, I, I got my tablet working, my old tablet, old, old tablet. So I'm gonna work on this. Maybe we'll do some creative sprints where we uh, work on that. <coughs> <coughs> ah, okay. Well, Chrono, I, I told you that these were gonna be loose interpretations. I'm sorry, I have a bit of a cough right now. That's part of why I've been spending the day working in bed instead of sitting in my chair, which is so much more exhausting. But we're sitting in the chair to stream here. Um, 
But um, anyway, long story short, the prompt for this was sunset. Which I don't even know if it actually takes place in sunset. Uh, but I was like, I can, I can make this work. I don't see any of the other prompts working better and I want to write this. So I'll use the prompt as an excuse. So, if you'll forgive me, I am about to make you listen to some of my writing. Um, also, I think they think there's a swear in here, but there's been swears in this game. So you will hear me say a swear, which does happen on occasion. Not often, um, but it has happened. Um, I don't think there's any F-bombs in this one. There are in some of the other fics, though. So It's the sky and the duel with sunset colored. So I'm going to drink some water. I'm going to try not to cough. But I've also tried to be kinder to you guys and keep my microphone not quite so close to my face as I usually... Oh, it's funny. See, I can put my hands over it and you can't... Da, da, da. Oh, anyway. <sighs> I'm stalling. Because I'm like, oh no. <clears throat> They're not going to like this. Anyway, if you don't know, writing is my profession and my hobby and my passion and my true love. And music and art are fun, but writing is my thing. And fanfic is like suddenly I can actually share my thing with people and it's very exciting. So without further ado, sunset. Whew. The setting sun at his father's back is in his eyes, or maybe it is the fires from the battlefield around them. The silhouetted shadow of his father is larger than life, like the man who came home from war and carried a little boy high on his shoulders around the house. The man who told him stories and expected the best from him and taught him that to be a man was to know when to be strong and when to be gentle. And now he would give anything to be that little boy again, to ride on his father's shoulders once more, for battlefields to be no more than the background of his father's stories haunting the man's eyes, distant and unknown, and only as real as fairy tales. His father stands in front of him, the great general Tio McDole, massive as a fortress in his gleaming armor, cloak billowing behind him in the breeze. But it is an illusion. His father's armor is smudged and smeared, his cloak singed, his face worn and lined and flecked with someone else's blood. And when his father extends the point of the sword towards Tyr, he is breathing heavily. His voice is hoarse when he repeats himself. I said, do you accept my challenge? There is no point in arguing. His father will not change his mind. His father will not become a prisoner of war. The thought is laughable if anything about the situation is even darkly humorous. Tio McDole will never be moved, and he will never surrender, not even to his own son. Rosman and Oppenheimer might have been controlled by Windy's cursed magic, but Tyr has always known that his father acts out of love for the Emperor. Tio will never betray Barbarossa. He will die by his son's hand before he will become a traitor to the Empire as his son has. Smoke fills the air, making Tyr's eyes sting and his throat itch, and he tastes the salt of sweat running down his face. He shoulders his bow staff, squares his stance, and takes a deep breath. Anything he might say in response is interrupted by cries of outrage and those around him calling his name in shock and horror. Victor, cut that man's head off, he hears Matthew order behind him. And he wants to shout, no, he's my father, because the massive silhouetted figure in front of him is not just that man to be dealt with so that the war can be won. Matthew knows when to be hard and when to be gentle, and at this moment he is cold iron, making a calculation that Tio should be struck down and not by Tyr's hand. And maybe that, in its own way, is meant as a kindness, too. But Tyr steps forward, facing his father. I accept, he says, before someone else can make this decision for him, because he knows why his father must do this. His father nods slowly, approving. Tyr has always sought his father's approval. Even now he seeks it. The rest of the world falls away, and all he sees is the man ahead of him, the man in whose face he sees his own. He realizes too late that his father swung wide on purpose, that this was an opening meant to be irresistible, to guarantee that Tyr would strike hard and true. Years of training as a soldier cannot be overcome so easily by sentiment. Would Tyr have been able to seek such an opening if his father had not offered it so plainly? Would he have been able to land the final blow without that provided opening? Would he have had the skill? And would he have had the fortitude? And, as the weight of what he has done crushes his heart, as he watches his father fall to his knees and then collapse on the flat trampled field, he wonders, would his father have struck him down in the end, if not? He drops beside his father, cradles his father's head in his lap, 
tries not to see the blood he has spilled, the skin he has torn, the bones he has crushed. His father reaches for his hand, and he grips his father's trembling hand with both of his, and what hurts more than anything is the love he sees shining brightly in his father's eyes. Tear, my son, you have become so strong, his father chokes out. Tear doesn't tell him to save his breath, because Tio is dying, and nothing can stop that now. He squeezes his father's hand. His own words are failing him. Around them, everything has gone sil still and silent. All Tyr sees is his father's face. All he hears is his father's voice and his father's ragged breaths as his chest rises and falls, rises and falls, and Tyr's heart aches. His right hand throbs that damn rune. I'm happy, my son, Tio gasps, and he is smiling somehow even though he knows he is dying. I have no regrets and I give my blessing to your choice. The greatest happiness a father can experience is to see his son surpass himself. Good luck, my son, Tyr. His voice is barely a whisper now, and Tyr leans forward to catch these last words. He can see the moment the light leaves his father's eyes, the moment his breath stills, and Tio McDole dies with his son's name on his lips, and he dies proud, and he dies full of love, and something inside of Tyr dies too. So there you go. <laughs> I I write drama. I like drama. Thank you, Blue Glass. Thank you all. Um, I won't subject you to fanfic reading all the time. Uh, not least of which because it probably takes a long time. But uh, thank you. Thank you. I think it'll probably read better when I'm not at risk of coughing because I'm not as in control of my voice right now as I would normally like. Thank you, Dover. <laughs> Flutie Bot is back to her bits chanting. Hold on, I think I might have to let my sad cat in. Sophie! Ah. Oh. I can scoot around in my chair now and just open the door. Sophie, come on in. You gonna come on in? Baby? Yes? No? Sophie? She's just standing in the doorway. In or out? In or out? Come on. Come, on, baby girl. You gonna come on in? No? Okay. All right. Thank you. Um, <laughs> I'll try reading you some of my lot fanfic <laughs> from middle school. <laughs> Or, how, or, or I guess it was middle school. Um, it might have been early high school. Um, so you can hear how I might have grown as a writer. Um, but that will make we require context from this next section of the game because it has Necklord in it, or is about Necklord, is related to Necklord in some way. Um, I'll have to double check in advance so that it doesn't have any major game spoilers. <clears throat> oh man. Well, good night, Brian. Sleep well. Um, don't tinker for too long. Get some sleep. Thank you for dropping by. Whew. Yeah. Whew. My voice is not in its best shape right now. Um, I hope I'm not getting sinus infection. I used to get them all the time. Like, I would have a sinus infection like every other month when I lived in Austin. It was not good. <laughs> auto host pulled you here well you're here now um but you won't be soon because you've got to go to sleep oh man <clears throat> carno please continue making fun of necklord he deserves it so if you'll remember we ran into a vampire named necklord he's a vampire lord he goes after necks or necrord necro Death. Vampires deal with death. No matter how you cut it, it's a terrible name. What was I doing? Where was I going? Okay, I'm not gonna go to Necklord's castle. Oh right, Kulon. I was gonna go get the uh, get the sword. <coughs> oh my god. Who here has 
seen Vampire Hunter D. So, Blue Glass. Do you take allergy meds? Have you used um, either a neti pot or a Flonase or some combination thereof? Because doing so changed my life. And I mean, maybe I'll have to do that. <clears throat> really? Okay, I'm sorry. Yeah, sinus infections suck. And having been somebody who got them every couple of months, uh, you, my heart goes out to you that you're still there. <clears throat> okay, well, if you're familiar with Vampire Hunter D, there will be some familiar familiarities. That's right, Lot is in my party. Wait, was there something I was supposed to do before I left the castle? <sighs> There was something I was supposed to do and I forgot. What was I supposed to do? I got distracted. I read fanfic instead of thinking about what I was supposed to do. And now I've messed it all up. No, but there's something I'm supposed to do in, in the home base. Was I like changing my gear around? <coughs> uh, cough, cough, cough. Oh, was I gambling? Oh, I am out of money. I am very close to being out of money. Thank you, Blue Glass. Blue Glass is absolutely right. <laughs> well done. Oh, man. I don't know if I'm going to be able to make the entire stream length tonight. We will see how I'm feeling. All right, Gaspar. <clears throat> the... No. Okay. Yes. All right. Ha ha! Yes! Off to a good start. Yes! Okay. All right, let's see how it goes. Come on, Gaspar. Oh no, is that good or bad? Okay, yes, okay, excellent. Yes. Let's keep trying. Eventually, we will have funded everything. Is this an actual game? I assume this is an actual game and not something they made up. I am safe stating. We may not need to. <laughs> ah, okay. That would make sense, though, Chrono, given the <coughs> literary influences of this game. <sighs> he is having a terrible night. Like, I'm not even having to load anything. Oh, man. Oh no, is that good or bad for us? Oh, that's good for us. All right. <laughs> Buddy! Buddy! Hang on, let me make sure that I'm using the right save state button. Save state, I am. Okay. Oh no, he actually got a hand. Oh no, am I gonna lose? Oh, it's a tie. It's a draw. Wham. Hold on. Okay, hold on. Oh, I realize that maybe I shouldn't have done that. Well, oh well. This is your gambling joint. This is his ga gambling joint. His joint. It's a joint. 
Sorry, folks. I shouldn't have done that. But it's okay. Oh no, he got an actual hand. That's off to a good start. Yes. I love the idea that he's laundering money this way. Right. Okay, thank you, buddy. Like, because he's just, he's, there's so many ways for him to lose money. <clears throat> all right, all right. <laughs> sure, let's go for it. We don't even need it. Like, I wouldn't be surprised if, like, they play tested it and it was less broken and they were like, we need the player to be able to make money. All right. Well, we did very well. <clears throat> Let's go put Kirkus in the party and dress him up, sharpen his weapon. Oh, that's true! Konami did go on to, uh, make, um, nothing but gambling things. No, we haven't always been as lucky as we were this round. This was extraordinarily lucky. What are we gonna do with his ears? Sanchez! No wine, maybe some tea. Tears underage. <clears throat> All right. <coughs> so Kirkus is a back row character, um, which means we're basically going to have to get rid of Lot, even though Lot was... I put a water rune on her. I specifically want it... Well, that's okay. We'll wander around with Lot and... Um, <clears throat> we'll wander around with Lot and Tengar in our party for a bit, just so you can see. Uh, Kirkus, where are you, buddy? You should be right around here. Sylvina is there. Where are you? Oh, he's here. <coughs> <coughs> All right. That is good advice, MC. Thank you for, um, being a person who answers questions and helps guide me through making smart tactical decisions in this, a smart tactical game. All right. Oh, you're not the one I want. He <laughs> says, thank you for not making me work. You're the one with, like, the cool hat. <clears throat> All right, Kirkus. We're going to try to make you less useless. I like Kirkus. I really do. I, I respect his devotion to his people and to the world at large. Wait. Oh man, remember how we did a really, really serious, 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 tr tragic, dramatic scene and had an alternate sound effect set? Remember that? <laughs> it was very appropriate. It's definitely the most appropriate thing that's ever happened with this game. <clears throat> I do rock. I need to dress up. Oh, actually, no. I think I'm going to go buy some clothes for him. <clears throat> Where's my shopkeeper? I think the next floor down. <sighs> it wouldn't hurt to have spares. And I think that we're at the point where it's not 100% duplicates. Like, some people can wear some things and some people can wear other things. So let's go dress this little buddy. All right, Chapman. Chapman says howdy. Oh, this is better than what she's got, huh? All right. Uh, 
Magic robe, ninja suit. He can wear dragon armor? Okay. All right, Kirkus. You're welcome to it. Or I guess, can everyone wear dragon armor? Okay, most characters can, Never mind then. I was thinking about, but no, full armor is the one that very few people can wear. 14. Um. Cape of Darkness. That sounds about as good as it's gonna get, right? I mean, everybody needs this. Why? Why do I have so few of these? Oh, because I didn't have any money! Right! That's why I was gonna get money! Okay. I was low on money. Well, have no fear. I just got some money, so now I can spend all of it. Okay. We're gonna sell these. I don't think I do. I think I would have seen them if I did. So we're just gonna do this. It's gonna be very inefficient with money because it doesn't really matter here. Because, as you've seen, making back the money is not actually that hard. Especially on an emulator. That's all the gear he needs. Now we'll get him some medicine. Alright. Quip. Victor. Put on two capes. Why do they have two capes? Oh my god, that's so ridiculous. Then again, wasn't somebody wearing shoes over their shoes, boots over their boots? Alright. Don't be naked, Carcass. Generally a good rule of thumb. <clears throat> Cleo and Ronnie are doubling up on their footwear. Makes them really tall. I probably should get Mega Medicines, shouldn't I? No, I want Mega Medicine. Chan not Chandler. Yes, Chandler. Okay, you are Chandler. Okay. Uh, what have I got? All this stuff. Wait, can I not? Oh, okay, I can. It's just all the way down there. <laughs> oh, Stallion. Stallion refuses to let any, like, gender limitations get in the way of his ability to be faster than anyone else. You can get some med Mega Medicine. Oh! He does! He's gotta go so fast. And he's also blue, which I wonder. I mean, like, I wanna be like, there's no way that wouldn't make any sense. You know? Ah, wrong button. There we go. Put you in a new hat. <laughs> well, he doesn't care about going fast in combat. I mean, I guess the winged boots do that too, but winged boots are more like visually. You see a winged boot and you're like, oh, you're gonna go fast. Oh my god, I would be so happy. I would be so happy if they were like... Yeah, we wanted him to be blue and really fast because we like Sonic the Hedgehog. Like, how great would that be? That'd be amazing. That would be delightful. Let's, let's, let's at least, at the very least, I'm gonna headcanon that that's the truth, you know? All right, there's a save point in here somewhere, right? Because I forgot to save. Hi, buddy. Where's the save point? I swear there's a save point. Ah, right? Right? Huh. Yeah, if Kirkus will level up in the cave, that would be very con convenient and considerate of him. There's one in the cave? Okay. We'll do that then. We probably won't die in those first couple seconds, but we'll see. Banshees and clay dolls. Excellent. Okay. Victor, you should probably go after the clay doll because it looks like a golem. Golems are scary. You can hit a banshee. 
you can hate the clay doll. Oh, is there blue glass? Okay, well, maybe I will. Okay, let's see what this does. Oh, wow, okay, never mind. These, is, these are a piece of cake. All right. Oh, no, nope, it's going to take two battles. Sorry, MC. Oh, is it the weapons that are doing it? Okay. I guess they figured that they, they forgot to take into consideration that you could just get money. Oh, man. Okay, well, if that's the case, just like... I mean, are these things really this easy? Let's find out. Yeah, they are. Oh no! You did some damage to me! The worst! Oh my god. Oh my god, this is so- this is- this is officially the easiest place in the game. My goodness. Alright, Kirkus. We could just like leave, do Kirkus' stuff, and then come back. But he's in the party now, so we might as well, you know, just keep going. Oh my god, that- that door almost got me. That hallway. Oh, I guess speedrun pieces are useful. That was... These are all... These are such unnecessary. Wow. Man. No, we're not here for the grouping strategy, but... I'm being very strategic, clearly. But you see, like, how nice the leveling system here is? Like, people who like grinding might find it annoying. Um, but... There are people who like grinding. I, I swear there are. Um, they're, they find strange things fun, but I think, well, I mean, I guess depending on the game, oh my god, boys! Boys! Come on, I'm disappointed in you both. Think about what you've done. <clears throat> I guess that's true, I did max out my weapons and they don't figure that I'm gonna do that. My god, there's so many treasure chests. There's so many paths to get to treasure chests. Yeah, no, like, it's it's not... For people who are, like, addicted to grinding, it, uh... I feel like this would be frustrating because you literally can't grind. Like, if the game stops you. But it's so good when they're like, you have to put this person in your party. And you're like, oh, I just literally just bought that, too. Um... <clears throat> You're like, I don't know this person, I don't care about this person, why is this a thing? Punch. Punch. Okay, so when there's a whole bunch of these guys, then I should actually strategize. I'm thinking I might have to get another chair at some point because my back has been really, really bad. Oh my god, I don't... There's too many paths. Okay, if I accidentally go the way I'm supposed to go, I'm going to be really mad. <laughs> I'm trying to get all this stuff. I, is there any stuff that I even care about here? Am I? Oh my god. So in my efforts to not go the right way, I've been going the right way this whole time. Oh, you're letting me down, game instincts. I have not recruited everybody here. Not from the temple, anyway. I think there's one more person. I think the... Is it the librarian? There's somebody in there that I have to recruit. That I need to get a rune for. Okay, well we're gonna go everywhere else. Oh, I can let I can let these guys go now. Oops. There we go. Yeah, no, I definitely want these things. Okay. Well, we're just gonna go back now that we can let let things go.
Just let everything go. No big deal. This is good though. This is a really, honestly, emotionally, like this is a really important life lesson. Like being able to let things go is really healthy. Uh, yeah. My goodness! I just like didn't go through like most of the, wow, okay. Medicine, flowing, oh, oh, I want that. Um, so for anyone who doesn't know the Suikoden series very well, um, oh, is it? Okay. Um, the flowing rune is the next level up, the next tier up of the water rune, which is the healing rune. So the flowing rune uh, lets you heal. I think you you don't have the little baby heal, but you have a lot more group heals, if I remember correctly. I'm trying to remember. Because there's kindness drops and kindness rain. And I seem to recall thinking that it's actually a good trade-off. Crimson cape. If you want to be Superman. But unless you put your underwear on the outside of your pants, you won't really be Superman. That's what, that's actually the source of his power. He, he, he tells you it's the yellow sun, but it's, it's, it's actually having that bravery. Okay, what does Mother Ocean do? I, I should know this. Ah, I should know this. Okay. Just everybody just hit it. <laughs> Yola balances out the colors. Yes, so the Suikoden tabletop game that my ex-husband ran. Oh, I accidentally went out. Oops. Um, I, we, it was it was after Suikoden one had come out, which meant that uh, it meant that uh, we had multiple rune slots. So my character had two rune slots, I think, because she was the, uh... Okay, hold on. You're gonna hit the guy in the back. You're going to hit this guy. You're gonna also hit the guy in the back, just in case he doesn't die. You're gonna hit that guy. You're gonna hit that guy. And you're gonna hit that guy. Okay. Oh shoot, wow. I did a bad job. Yeah, so because she was the um she was the the Great Hawk Rune character. Um Does somebody have the Great Hawk Rune in this game? Shows up in two. Okay, yeah, because it's. I think I think it's in two. I think it's in two. But anyway, so my character was the great Hawkeroon character, which is to say she was the archer. She was a sharp sharp shooter, and she led the division of archers in the army um, because, of course, we had army battles. Um, but her secondary rune slot, as one often does with. Um, back row characters like that uh, she used it as a <laughs> oh my god chrono who who has it in in a uh... who has it in two I'll, I'll hit myself like in the head once I know that I'll smack my forehead and be like oh, I knew that but honestly, the fact that I remembered where I was supposed to be going, based on having streamed last week, like, that I was like, oh no, I have to go to the Kulon Temple. My, my, uh, my memory is actually doing a lot better. Although, I am out of iron supplements, so I need to go to the store. I don't know, but I'm not seeing, I'm not seeing, like, am I missing some turns in this cave? Have I missed some turns? I feel like I've gone everywhere now that I can get to, but let's see what happens if we go on.
Is Crowley in here? Okay, so there's not a character that comes with the Great Hawk rune. I thought there was somebody who came. Maybe it's in three that somebody has the Great Hawk rune. And it was like a thing to be like the Great Hawk rune character. Jacques, okay. Right, I thought so. Where is Crowley? Oh, right! He's Harmonian, isn't he? He looks it, now that I think about it. That's the thing with my character. She was secretly Harmonian, um, and their country, like, was bordered by Harmonia, and so, like, they, there were, like, slave traders that took people from their, their country to Harmonia. Um, and so she, like, was, like, this Harmonian noblewoman, like, young noblewoman who was, like, screw this. So she went around trying to, like, interrupt the slave trade, um, and, uh, got a reputation for doing so. Um, but she, she dyed her hair black so people wouldn't know she was Harmonian. They might think she was part Harmonian. There are walls you can walk through in this dungeon? Okay. <clears throat> You're gonna have to tell me exactly where to go because I, I clearly don't know what I'm doing here. And I'm distracted thinking about my character Celia. It was a it was a really good tabletop game. It was really good. Um it's good enough that it feels enough like the original that I will start talking about it like it was. Um but yeah, so Celia was my character in that game. And she uh She, like, got caught by somebody. Wait, is this... Is this... Okay, here we go. Window crystal! Alright, cool. I guess it is kind of telegraphed. Um. Yay! We did, in fact, need that. Okay, I will look for that. Thank you. Man, Flick! Do a little bit of damage there, show everyone else how it's done. But yeah, so for those of you who are not familiar with the Suikoden series, um... <clears throat> uh... Harmonia is a recurring and very important location that we see hinted at. There's a little bit. Sasurai shows up in Sasurai shows up in two, right? Yes, he does. And then you get a lot more about Harmonia in three. Um, the country that we were in, Maris Ovi, that's that's what he named it, um, was bordering the um, what are they called in Speaker in 3? Because we actually went into like the bug city in 3. We visited there. No, but like the grasslands are part of something, right? Because you've got the grasslanders, but then you've got the other people. Is it the... No, what's the name of the the group of them? Because the Grasslanders are only Hugo's people. <laughs> yeah, there's a, like, like we've mentioned before, there's a character who has a relatively small bit part in two who is phenomenally important in five. And when you realize, if you get his backstory in two, and then you're playing through five, you kind of get this idea of what you think is going to happen based on that. You're like, oh shoot! Doesn't go quite the way you expect it will. So cool. It was so cool. <coughs> I'm sorry I will not get to have that experience for all of you live on stream. 
But if we play that game at some point, you can be positive I will cry a lot even though I know what's happening because you can't not cry during that scene. Oh, I need to heal after this battle. Oh, okay. Thank you. And I haven't been paying any attention to my health. <sighs> so th this is only... Only, yeah, that's what I thought. Oh, it's an incense burner. Okay. Oh, so it's the Karaya clan in the grasslands. Okay, thank you. My goodness, you just got all this stuff. Hey, Greg. <clears throat> you missed me reading some fanfic out loud. Wait, no, but there was one that I didn't get to. Escape talisman. They're like, in case you find this hard. Is this gonna take me... Do I have to go back? Oh my god, Chrono. <laughs> Thank you, Chrono. <laughs> but yeah, so if there is a section in a game that is, like, good or interesting or has potential, and you're like, Lauren, I think you should write that. I'd like to see what your take on that would be. Feel free to challenge me to do so, and I may take you up on that. Especially right now while I'm trying to, like, write a ton of little bits and pieces. Like, I wrote something for Transistor. I wrote something for Final Fantasy VII Remake. I'm working on something for Final Fantasy IX. Like, all these, like, little bits so there's no commitment. <clears throat> I'm good to keep going here. Okay. Hmm. Oh, that's right! I was gonna try to write something from from 10. That's a good suggestion. Um, so Dover, instead of NaNoWriMo, because I knew that I was moving this like, last month, I decided to uh, do a different challenge, which was... Uh, that was a secret passage back there. Okay, well, we're gonna go back there. Um... <clears throat> I decided to do um, what I call Drabble November, even though none of my entries were even close to a Drabble in length. They were all much longer because I am, shocker, a person who uses a lot of words. <laughs> I know, I know, I make fun of myself about, for this like literally every time it comes up, but that's because it's really funny to me. <coughs> all right, let's find the secret passage. But, so I had a prompt a day, which I promptly... <laughs> promptly failed to keep up with. Um, but now that it's no longer November, I'm going to finish up Drabble November and December. Um, so I'm working on those prompts. Yeah! Yeah, you do, you do see what I did there. It's very clever. Hmm. Is this the way that I came from? Oh no, I haven't been here. Okay. Cool. We'll go to the left after that. Alright, we got the war scroll. Cool. Let's go find Crowley. Hmm. <clears throat> but yeah, so <clears throat> that's where the uh, <coughs> a little bit of fanfic that I flat spot too too wide here or down 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 down. Okay, I feel like we're like playing like Chocobo Hot and Cold. Got it. Hi, buddy. So the whole thing with him is that he, like, found a way to put a bunch of runes on himself, right? Isn't that his story? <clears throat> All right. Now we know where he is. Bye, Banshee. Yes, that's where I got that from. 
Thank you, MC. <clears throat> So we used to think that like, <clears throat> when this game was the only one that was out, it was like, oh man, having more than run rune, that's crazy, that's crazy talk, you can't do that. We won't allow you to develop your OC who has three runes on because that's not how things work. God, the character applications we got running that game. This is not the, not the good Suikoden um, tabletop game that my ex-husband ran, but the uh silly play-by-chapter thing that my sister and I wrote, which we took very seriously, but it was not as good. Medicine and Silverlet. Cool. <laughs> All right. But I can come back to the temple, right? I don't have to So I can just, I can finish this up. <clears throat> oh God. Why is this dungeon so big? To make up for the fact that there are no dungeons in Suikoden 4. I'm just going to make fun of Suikoden 4 constantly. I hope you're alright with that. <clears throat> Yes, no, that's a very intentional naming choice. A lot of times when they name a character after something, you're like, do you know what that... Okay, you don't care. That's fine. I mean, we sure are going deep into this cave. Oh, man. <clears throat> There's not very many, Greg. There's like three. Over, I appreciate your sense of humor. Yes! <sighs> okay. Spoiler. I like this. Um. <clears throat> it's a cool looking sword, isn't it? <laughs> the sword talks. Hi, Blade Tiger. <clears throat> Have you not seen this before either, this game? <laughs> Victor's like, what? Okay, Blight Bly Tiger. Well, I'm sorry, this may not make a ton of sense. Um, at this point, it only depends. It don't, like, you're not expected to have any knowledge of the other games because they hadn't come out yet when this game came out. This being the first. <laughs> <clears throat> yeah, I, I somehow forgot that this is the song that plays here, which makes sense when I saw the title of it. I thought it was the Ninja Town song, but. <laughs> Clear's like, Victor shouldn't have tried to touch the sword. Now we got cursed and launched into whatever this is. What is this? What, what could this be? I don't remember fungus battles. I don't know what you're talking about. I didn't like 4 very much. Yeah, the music here is really good. So there's a child running away from us. Oh, I forgot that this is where this happens. Things are not accidental <clears throat> in this series. So this is not a this is this is not an instance in which they accidentally translated someone's name wrong.
You were right, MC. No, it's okay, Chrono. It's all right. Well, so do we say. Yeah, they did tell us it was Cave of the Past. All right. <laughs> So context contextually for the people who maybe dropped in and haven't seen earlier streams, <coughs> this character has the name of our main character's childhood best friend who grew up with him, um, who died earlier in the game um, when we discovered that he was in fact 300 years old um, and had been surviving running from somebody because he has this rune on his hand which he then passes over to the main character and is like, please forgive me. Um, please take this. Please keep it safe. Don't let her have it. Um, and then he dies. Um, and his soul gets absorbed by the soul eater rune that he just gave me. Um, and then suddenly we go through this cave. There's a this sword. It curses us. It pulls us into the sword. And here we are talking to a child version of that character. And the last time we saw him, we were crying because he died. And now there's this little boy named Ted. And we're like, what is going on? And so, like, when you talk to him, like, the characters in the party don't know his name is Ted. We as the player do. There's a little bit of dramatic irony there. Followed by the kid being called Ted. Which is why Cleo is required in this scene. Because we need somebody. Because she's the only person who is definitely still alive at this point. <laughs> Who knew Ted? Because Gremio is dead. Pawn could be dead. So Cleo's the only option we've got at that point. Um, so what, what, do, what do we want to go with here, Chrono? I'm sorry you're having to make the dialogue decisions. This is another great flute song. There's just so many good flute songs in this soundtrack. I could just like cover the whole thing and it would be great. Okay, must be someone else. Okay. Clear's so like, well, <clears throat> and now there's people here. What are they talking about? The treasure, what we've been protecting for so many years. Wendy, what? What could all of this mean? To get to that chest. Hello, little old lady. Little old lady's like, no, I'm gonna eat your bread instead. I do like bread. Can a mirror or something on top of that? So here we are now. They're not telling us. The village of the hidden rune. We're like, Ted, treasure, keeping it safe, windy, hidden rune. Ah. So if you don't know what's going on, you, you figured it out by now. <laughs> Unless you're like 12, like, then maybe it's a little harder to figure out, which is why it's good that they have so much. All right. So here's the little boy. Yes, yeah, so I can't go down there. So we got sent here by the Star Dragon Sword. Oh. By that woman. Victor, on the other hand, doesn't have all the context clues and I love him to death. Victor's not the biggest brain in the series. Like, he's got, he's like a big brawn, but yeah. Um, yeah. So I just keep going through, right? I'm not going to miss anything here.
like I, I love dialogue like this because so much of the time when you talk to someone they just talk at you like in games um they just like say a thing um that's just like like you press the button and like the subject of what they're saying but in this case the way that this is written tells you something about your character um because we don't get direct insight into what McDowell is thinking unless other people are commenting on like you you look tired you must be sad um but this line right here tells us that you are staring at his face to such a degree that it's a bit it's 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 not normal or natural like you can't stop staring at him is this my friend as a child but he's dead and this is a child how could that be and i find it really interesting which I, i'm sorry i feel like interesting is the thing that i say again and again i i hear myself saying it a lot yeah, no, there's there's a lot of things in this series that make me wish the character wasn't silent. Fanfic lets me fill those holes in. And I know that they want you to be able to feel like you can fill those holes in yourself, but I don't think that's necessary. <laughs> that's cute, Dover. And you thought that might be an important thing, but it's just a mega medicine. But yeah, so Ted Ted did indicate that he had he had history with Wendy. Village chief is like, this is a bad idea. Clear is like, I am not as dense as Victor, so I'm gonna piece this together. Notice, like, these are the characters who are required to be in your party at this point. <coughs> so here she is. And if we hadn't figured this out, if we were perhaps a child playing this game for the first time, having never seen a game do what this game does, like, you're just like, wait, they said that's Ted and this is Wendy. Are they actually going there? That's right. Do you recognize the sprite beside her, Chrono? Do you know who that is? Yes, and Wendy looks exactly the same. I'm just waiting to see if Chrono knows who this is beside her. If he, if he recognizes that sprite. No, okay, that's all right. That's okay, Victor. Victor's like, who needs foreshadowing, Lauren? Shut up. <coughs> Yeah, if you see, he's got the, 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 the swoopy bat collar on his cloak. If you look at it more closely. Victor's, Victor doesn't know what's going on. Cleo's like, whatever. Meanwhile, McDole is actually caring about what's happening. In case you hadn't figured it out, they will now spell it out for you. Victor's like, you can't trust my brain with this, so somebody else with a better brain. You! Cleo! <sighs> <clears throat> I relate, Victor. Cleo... <clears throat> so this is one of those things where, um... Like... For us, it's extremely easy to piece these things together. Maybe it would have been harder as a kid. I don't remember whether I was confused by this as a kid. But if you were in it, you your brain would be fighting you on understanding what's happening because it's impossible. It's so strange. And then you have the emotional baggage of it being Ted, you know? 
So <laughs> the village of totally not hiding a rune. That's a good one. Um, but uh, but so like even though maybe it's a little bit frustrating, like how how do we have such an easy time piecing it together? But the players, like or the characters, don't get it. They 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 don't want to believe it. They don't they they don't live in a like they live in a world that has its own rules and its rules are being broken because we are playing a game we expect that the rules of things may break at any time um so it's very different yeah so like if you were to be transported into a thing and somebody were to get through to you like now you are in a story and you're like okay i have stepped into a story and then it looked like time travel happened you'd be like okay well i'm now in a story so i'm like primed to be like ah oh, yes time travel can happen in stories but if like you woke up one day and you were in a different time and place and you were really really confused and you were like with people that you knew you might not jump to time travel because it's preposterous but this is a story so that can happen um Cleo is piecing it together though because she's got a better brain oh oh I forgot that Uber showed up here <clears throat> Blackout drunk and time traveled. You know, I've never been blackout drunk, so I can't... And, and I don't think I've ever time traveled. So I am extremely ill-equipped to draw any comparisons between the two. So I will have to take your word for it, MC. Yeah, you were... Oh my god. I have things I could say about you, but I'm not going to. He's like, well, I'll just soul eater her. That's a good idea. That's a great idea. Which I believe Ted tries doing. Oh. Yeah. She's like, what the heck just happened? The emulator didn't glitch on this one. No, that's true. That's right, the rune of life and death. So. Um, a number of the um, true runes have multiple names. Uh, some of their names are secret. <laughs> some of their names would be spoilers. Um, but if they have multiple names, it, it can be interesting. Like, Soul Eater being the rune of life and death is interesting. Um, it, it implies that it is more than just eat your soul. Um, which again, like, the, they don't go into it so much in this game, I don't think. But the 27 true runes have a great deal of power and are kind of like sort of creator deities in a way so <laughs> so this is where Ted gets the rune Okay, I, I didn't remember if that was in, in, in a book in this game or... Okay, well, we'll read that. Let's see what's actually in there versus, like, what my, like, past couple of decades of fandom knowledge has put in my head. Oh, does it? Okay. Planting those seeds early. Terrible fate. Yeah. Yeah. No, so here, Ted Ted is clearly very young and he does not know what's going on. That his grandfather, who is apparently the only family he has, <clears throat> is like, I am cursing you with this because she can't have this rune. I am so sorry. Don't use the rune, Ted. 
Doesn't matter how scary the big ant bug is. Don't use the rune. But he's an idiot teenager. So he, he's, he's, he's a brash punk. So, do, uh, do you remember how we got away in, uh, in Gregminster? And I'm not talking about Victor's scheme, but how we got out of McDowell House in Gregminster. Do you remember that? I feel like he's younger than 10 here. Like, do you, do, you, do you remember that? Yeah. I will get Wendy's attention and act as a decoy. You get away with the rune. It has to be safe. It has to be protected at all costs. So Ted goes out, already grievously wounded, to act as a decoy while the rest of us slip out the back, doing exactly what his grandfather did 300 years earlier. So we gotta get... Oh, right! Yes, that is correct, Dover. Yeah, so that's, which, which again, that's why the, the in my opinion, uh, the soul leader is the worst route. <laughs> <coughs> Huber. That's a good question, Dover. I don't know. <laughs> Victor. Yeah. He looks cooler here. He sure does have the pretty hair. People were really excited about his hair. Cleo's like, I can tell this guy's going to be a bad idea to fight. Ah, yes. <laughs> oh, Huber. Unfortunately, we never really fully got closure on that, did we? He's cool looking, though. He's kind of got a... He's kind of zero. <laughs> he's kind of got a zero brooding blonde thing going on. Um, that's not really how that works, Uber. Chopping someone into little pieces is not a painless way to go. to the villagers. Yes, there aren't that many Teds who have the Soul Eater. <laughs> that, I mean, Ted is not an uncommon name, but the Soul Eater <laughs> indicates that it is in fact the same one. Victor finally figures it out. So Cleo is here to be the one who puts it together in case you don't put it together. Now we're going to go explore first. So you think you're gonna run away with him, but you don't get to. Oh, the boy rune! 
Okay. I already have one of those though, right? Pawn has one of those. I guess Pawn might be dead, so now you can put the boar rune on. <clears throat> Somebody else. Alright, yeah, we're gonna loot the village. Yeah, I think Pawn's is stuck to him. Champion's crystal, that sounds important. I don't remember what that is. Oh, the double beat rune! We had somebody go to double beat rune in, uh, in the tabletop game. Alright, so that's it, right? Is there anything else I need to get here? I want to say I think our um, Tenkai star had the double beat rune. I think. I'm trying to remember. Ronnie Bell's a double beat rune, doesn't she? That's, hold on, is that so? Mm. No? Okay. I thought maybe it would be, but it wasn't. She's the hate rune, that's right. Ah, okay. Well, Chrono, what answer do we give? Oh, double read and double strike. Okay, yes. This is how he knows to find you, or maybe maybe he encounter. Well, no, because I think that he's wounded on a battlefield, and uh, Tio takes him home, and then he sees you, and he's like, "Oh, okay, I understand." And then he stays with you and lives the happiest years of his life in the McDowell household. After being alone for so long, he finds a place where he can just live. So it's weird blue glass. I don't know because they do stop. We I'm trying to think we have any more. I'm trying to remember because we have other characters who have true runes for an extended period of time and don't age. I don't remember what Ted's deal with that is, so we'll find out if that's something that's revealed in this story. Or is it something that's revealed elsewhere? Victor's like, well, this appears to be a cave again. So I was really ups really emotionally upset because I really liked Ted. As a kid, I really liked Ted a lot. <clears throat> okay, Greg, thanks. Um, so Victor's like, maybe I shouldn't touch the hot stove twice because I got burned the first time. <clears throat> Everyone should just be sassing Victor all the time. <sighs> Fortunately for us, we now have a sword <laughs> who believes in that exact same thing.
Yeah, like, everybody loves the Star Dragon Sword. <laughs> it is, in fact. <clears throat> Again, so, if you're familiar with Vampire Hunter D, you know the, the, the his hand, <laughs> who's always giving him a hard time. Yeah. <laughs> I feel like that didn't fully translate very well. The uh, the presumptuousness of it doesn't quite come through because partner doesn't is the meaning of partner is so unclear for English. Alright, so we're just gonna hit everything really hard. Alright. My, my last roommate was trying to convince me that I should listen to the Adventure Zone because she was really into it. She got really into it the last couple months that I lived there, but I just... <clears throat> Aha! Haha! Right. Alright, escape talisman. Let's do it. I'm not seeing any hiccups on my end. Oh, it is, and it's a really complicated dungeon, so I don't want to walk back through that. Or at least I'm not. Oh! You know what? I'm on Wi Fi. I forgot to plug this back into the wired internet. So my computer's handling it just fine. But maybe my internet is hiccuping a bit. Well, it'll be better next time because I will remember. Remind me to plug in. If we're having internet problems, just remind me to plug it into the wired ethernet. Um, before we do. All right, there's the old book. <clears throat> the war scroll. He looks like somebody, and I can't think of who. Alright. We're recruiting these folks. Yeah. Then all we gotta do is go talk to the boss, right? I don't remember where he is. I don't remember where anyone is located. You would think I would remember these things, but you would be wrong. Maybe I'm thinking of that nerdy kid. It's locked with a capital L. Well, because this is this is a this is a gaming laptop and wired internet is so much more reliable that I imagine that's why you would want to have your ethernet access. So Oh, 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 I recruited him already. Okay, thank you. I forgot MC that I had, so I was looking for him. All right. Time to teleport around a bunch, then. We're going to recruit some folks. Yeah. You ready, Tyr? Tyr's like, excuse me, I'm having feelings. We're like, no. <clears throat> no feelings allowed. Okay, Kobold Village. Where's the Cobalt Village? Can I teleport to the Cobalt Village? Or is that one of those ones where I actually have to go through somewhere else to get to it? I do, don't I? Ah, uh, which one do I want? Great Forest? It's Great Forest, right? No, this is shorter. The... Burnt Village of the Elves. That's what I want. And then I just walk back. Man. Yes, the Crispy Elves. Huh, I'm glad to know that my really stupid jokes that my sister and I came up with when we were little now live on and have been passed on to you. I've shared some of my dumb Final Fantasy VI ones. I've shared some of my dumb Suikoden ones. All right. Status not on fire, yes.
The, I told you the story about the status on fire, right? I told you where that came from, right? You're Ruby. Ruby's like, I'm so cool, I have my hair in my eyes. Okay, good. Oh, am I not high enough level? What do I need to have to do I have to be 45? I thought you said I was 35. Okay, well. Okay. Ah, okay, we had to have our first conversation. Okay. Okay, so we had to have our introductory conversation and then our follow-up conversation and then he joins. That's kind of a cool way for it to go, actually. He's like, you were so little and now you've become strong and brave. That's cool. Okay. <clears throat> so we are... Hold on, let me make sure that I know where we're going. It did. Well, silly game thinking I was going to talk to people. <laughs> okay, Tan. Okay. Or I don't know how to pronounce that actually. All right, we're going to do this. And then we'll walk out and come back and see how big our castle has grown. Ask for teleportation. I'm in this song. It's kind of uncomfortable when it's the exact same sprite twice. I assume I recruited someone. And then they just lazily replaced that person. You're the generic sprite. <laughs> Man, I would like to sing along, but my uh my voice is not in good shape. It's like, are you strong? Whoa, you're strong. Thanks, he says. So I realized I should probably let them actually talk, but So window is in the uh warrior's village. We can go there. We can do that. We manage this. Right, teleport. I'm actually somewhat able to remember where I'm going and what I'm doing. This is actually very, very much an improvement, but I need to get my, uh, I need to get my iron supplements so I can keep taking my supplements and keep having a functional brain. It's just very, very, very nice to have a mostly functional brain. Right now, like I said, I don't feel very good, so I don't feel as functional as I should, but I will again feel functional. <laughs> Hang on, we gotta go get window. Obviously some, some nonsense is gonna happen here. It looks like they're gonna go try to rescue Tengar. They're like, hey, do you know where the castle is? Well, we'll tell you just in case. But I already walked out that way so I can just teleport. Save myself that trouble. Where is he? Oh, right, okay, hold on. Even in the forest, not just at night during your work for the king. So that is a code. And that is, like, they tell us that that's some kind of code so that you write it down because it, it is a useful thing to know. Not in this case. Oh, we should probably visit Hugo with our old books. Where is Window? Am I just blind? Oh, 
Hello, Taroko. How are you? Where is he? I thought we came here because he was here, and now I haven't found him. Is he going to be in the last place I look? Probably. Yes, of course. <laughs> yes. Oh, we can change our windows. That's going to be great. He's got a funny hat. All right. So we're going to go leave the village. We're going to get Lot back. So if anything else, you can see that I'm not crazy when I say that Lot looks a lot like Tengar. All right. Item. We also need to drop some of our stuff because we have so much of it. So we're going to go pay a visit to Rock. We're gonna make this work. Oh, we need to go give some old books. I don't remember what floor the library's on. Because this isn't three. <laughs> where I can remember where the library's located because it's memorable. Hmm. Hmm. Hi, Rock. Let's go put Lot in our party. Then strip everything off of Carcass. Sorry, buddy. Oh, really, Toroko? Okay. So. <laughs> Why is it. Does something show up that it's Illusion of Gaia's Isle? Zio. Because it should show up as Suikoden unless something went wrong. I'm changing, I'm changing lot. I actually was doing this intentionally. I'm very proud of myself. Bye, Kirkus. Oh, okay. Yes, no, this, the game is about the human cost of war. No, that's, that's true. Well, am I wrong? I think that that's a pretty accurate description of the series. All right, little lot. Where are you? There we go. Okay, but I have to go. I'm going to go <clears throat> get some stuff. <coughs> but yeah, so this is um, a fairly early PlayStation RPG from 1995. This is a very, very serious and dark game in a lot of ways. But I want to say it's like dark, like it's not like dark and brooding. It's not like Shadow Hearts where it's like there's demons and the worst of humanity and a little bit of Lovecrafty and horror. Like, no, it's just a... Uh, War is ugly, and sometimes people who are trying to do the right thing for the right reasons do bad things along the way. It's very interesting. I mean, I don't know that you'll be able to get the sense of that from me walking around because you get a home base. Which what we're doing right now is we're going around our home base, getting information, getting stuff, moving things around because we have like a librarian, we have an item shop, he, we have this guy is managing all of our in inventory space and stuff. I mean, Shadow Hearts one taking Shadow Hearts taking place around World War One does kind of fit the darkness of the game, but also there's Lovecraftian horrors and people trying to raise the dead and instead breaking reality and unleashing undead horrors on the world, and the main character's soul is getting stolen slowly. Like, it's a dark game series. Um, Yuri is a great character. No, he's really fantastic. He's a little much for me in the first game, but in the second game, he is, I think, one of the best JRPG heroes I can think of because he's different. He's got his own personality. Does he always do the right thing? No. There's a there's a there's a section in in Shadow Hearts 2 where he's 
beating the crap out of this old man, and the old man's grandkid comes out and is like, what are you doing? And he's like, um, um. No, there's a lot that's good in Shadow Hearts, but it is, it is very, like, dark. It's kind of trying to do a little Lovecraftian horror stuff, um, which Suikoden doesn't. <clears throat> Suikoden is like, sometimes you have to, f sometimes you have to kill the people you love if you're on opposing sides of a war, and that hurts. That's the kind of darkness this we get in. Yeah, flawed characters can be really good, and a lot of games and stories, just stories in general, are afraid to let their characters be truly flawed. So that's part of what I appreciate about Yuri from uh, from Shadow Hearts. Is that the people who who made the game knew that he was a very flawed character. Wait, there's a Shadow Hearts 4? Oh no, there's a Sweet Code in 4. Okay, thanks. So it's from, it's it's very early in the PlayStation generation, so Super Nintendo RPGs were like the RPGs that came before this, basically. This came out, I think, shortly before Final Fantasy VII did, or close to it. Um, so. I probably want that crimson cape. It's probably good. I don't think the silver lets are good, though. I think I've got a lot of those. My goodness, I've got a lot of these things. Or crystal. Don't think I want that. Okay, we're gonna get some of the old books. <clears throat> oh, we should probably give away the, uh... Well, well, let's give the window settings, too. Might as well. Oh man, Live Alive. That is, that is a game. I have really complicated feelings about Live Alive. So we're going to go up. Wait, no, no, you said it was on that same floor, right? Wait, no, no, no. <clears throat> Parts of it were very, very good. Parts of it I thought were very, very bad. But it was a very good idea, and it did some really cool things. <clears throat> Alright, Hugo. <coughs> Alright, are you ready for some lore deep dive, Chrono? Um, this might answer some of the stuff that those of us who are longtime fans of this series have been kicking around trying to remember the exact details. Mostly me. <clears throat> Here we go! Okay, here's the true runes. Some world dump stuff. Oh, Sundown is a good choice. Uh, my favorite of the stories, I think, was the one with, with Cube. Um. Yes, that's right. We're gonna get we're gonna get a lore dump, and I might read these out loud because I don't know how clear you can read this. <clears throat> so the twenty-seven true runes, their creation. This is big stuff. In the beginning, there was darkness. Darkness. The darkness is in quotes, so presumably that's an entity of some sort. <clears throat> darkness lived for eons in a rift in time, suffering in solitude for so long. Darkness finally dropped a tear. Two brothers were born of tear. Sword. Wait, hold on. Ah, and shield. Sword said he could cut anything to pieces. Shield swore he could protect anything. And so the two went to battle. The battle lasted seven days and seven nights. Sword cut apart shield, and shield broke sword into pieces. Yes, well, Chrono, that's, like, objectively the best part of that game. But unfortunately, like... 
You have to get through parts that aren't so good to get to it. Um, sword into pieces. Fragments of sword fell and became the sky. Fragments of shield fell and became the earth. Sparks from the battle became the stars. The 27 jewels that adorned sword and shield became the 27 true runes. And the world went into motion. That's what they mean by the rune of beginning. Okay. Wow. 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 Sorry, I had forgotten about this. Yeah, no, it's a cool creation myth, and it's one that the game doesn't forget. <clears throat> That's cool. It's not super complicated, Taroko. Um, and you can, like, deal with bits and pieces of it at a time. I have been playing this game since uh, since it came out. So, like, for me, I'm, like, going back and forth between, oh, this is this and this is this. And it looks like, oh, there's all these things going on. But I'm also fairly late in the game, and I know what I'm doing with it. <clears throat> Man, the caveman chapter was not my idea of fun in that game, unfortunately. Um, <clears throat> so that's interesting. Okay, so it's the sword, the, the, the sky, the earth, and the stars. That's cool. Ancient teachings. At certain times, the I didn't realize that they just, like, info-dumped the lore. <laughs> I'm like, I don't know where we all got this from. I don't know why we have these ideas because the first game gave it to us, like literally spelled it out. Ancient teachings. At certain times, the runes can give men immense powers. The power they provide is magic. Each rune provides four magical powers, but the great ancient magician Crowley, who we just ran into, found a method of surpassing teachings. If two souls are united, two runes are united, and their ultimate power is unleashed, a power greater than the sum of the parts generated. The union of souls means that two rune masters apply their magic almost at the same time. The union of runes refers to harmony, in other words, fire and earth, and earth and wind, wind and water, and water and lightning. Lightning and fire are harmonious. Ultimate power means the release of the maximum runic magic. When three of these powers are combined, the greatest of magical powers is unleashed. <clears throat> did you know you can team up your magical powers? No, actually, I never did this. You can probably tell how often I use magic in this week and in series. You know, that one's on, um, that one, that, that's for basically a magic team up rather than unite attacks. <clears throat> Strategy of war. Understand the enemy's methods. A soldier is stronger than an arrow. An arrow is stronger than magic. Magic is stronger than a soldier. As a result, knowing the enemy's methods are a natural advantage. So in other words, use thief. The necessary to utilize ninja power. An enemy's methods always follows a pattern, knowing the pattern is a shortcut to victory. When the enemy is without a magician, attack in full force. Betrayal is most effective <laughs> when you are few and the enemy is many. Okay, so that's when you ask to recruit people, if there's a lot more of them than there are of you. 